what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a country ass Missouri style fried catfish at home, plus some crispy, fluffy hush puppies to bring it all together. To get started, I'll need some catfish. Specifically, I've got two pounds of thawed IQF American catfish here. I specify American catfish because most of the catfish that you see in restaurants these days is actually an Asian variant called swai or pangasius. Both the American catfish and the Asian swai can be great in terms of quality or total trash. It just depends on the producer. Unfortunately, since the market for this fish is mostly lower income households, the producers have raced to the bottom in terms of quality to produce the cheapest possible product. That usually means adding a ton of phosphates during freezing to pump up the weight of the fish. When that product cooks, all the water leaches out and then it sogs up your breading. Also, no surprise here, those chemicals can make the fish taste weird. The American catfish products that I tend to use are less plagued by this phosphate issue, so I prefer those over the Vietnamese swai or pangasius, but be prepared to spend three to four more dollars per pound. Now to prep this fish for the pot, I'll cut it in half on a bias. That's chef speak for on an angle. Cutting it on a bias will give me two halves that are roughly the same weight. And once I've got them all cut, I'm gonna take an extra step that most fish fry places do not. That's give this fish a brief salting to both firm up the flesh and to season the meat throughout. When it comes to frozen fish, the freezing process can damage the flesh if it's not done properly, and that can make the product kind of soggy. This little curing step can help firm things up and mitigate any mushiness. Now, once these fish have a light dusting of salt on both sides, I'm gonna move them off to the side to cure for 20 minutes while I make some hush puppies. But first, I'll need to set up my fryer. So I'll drop a heavy bottom pot on the stove over medium high heat, and then I'll add in two to three quarts of neutral oil. I like canola for most fried things these days, but peanut is also a good option. And while that oil comes up to temp, I'll quickly bust out the batter for my puppies. Into a medium bowl, I'll combine 65 grams of all-purpose flour, 150 grams of medium to fine grind cornmeal. I generally just go for the generic Quaker brand for my fish and hush puppies. Next, in goes eight grams of salt, 10 grams of baking powder, 10 grams of sugar, two grams of cayenne pepper, and 75 grams of diced onion. I prefer to go pretty small on the onion. That's because these fritters only fry for about two and a half minutes and if your onions are too chunky they're basically still going to be raw when you bite into them next i'll add in 25 grams of melted butter or roughly a tablespoon and a half then one large egg and 200 grams of buttermilk and once everything's in the bowl i'll give it a quick whisk to combine the batter should look like wet spackle if it's too dry it'll be a bummer to eat and if it's too wet it'll explode in the oil fritters are pretty forgiving though so just eyeball it and adjust it with buttermilk or extra flour as needed now Let's fry these things. Over at my pot, this oil is sitting at right about 350F. So using two spoons, I'll grab about two tablespoons worth of batter and then scoop it off the spoon and into the oil. You can be pretty loose with your shaping here. Like I said, fritters are easy, so you don't have to worry about dropping them in pretty round shapes. In fact, the egg and the baking powder in there will leaven these in a way that makes them roundish pretty much no matter what. Now I'm gonna fry these hush puppies for two and a half minutes in two batches. Each batch is gonna be about seven to nine pieces, give or take. About halfway through, I'll come back and flip these over so that they're getting evenly cooked, and then I'll fry them for another 90 seconds or so. Depending on how things are looking, you actually might want to come back and flip them one more time just to make sure the blonde bits are getting fully submerged in the oil. And after two and a half minutes, these have taken on some nice golden brown color and are looking crispy around the edges. So I'll lift them out of the oil, let anything excessive drip off, and then I'll move them over to a wire rack to drain while I cook round duh. What I love about these hush puppies is that they have tons of these little craggy bits hanging off the edges. Those are super crispy and brittle and will contrast the fluffy soft interior perfectly. Over at the stove, I'll scoop in the rest of my batter and cook for two and a half minutes, flipping halfway through. And once all my hush puppies are cooked, wait a minute, Brian, there's only 13 hush puppies here. Where's the rest? I ate five while filming, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you, they taste good and I'm weak and hungry. So to keep these from being snacked into extinction, I'll move them over to a low oven to stay warm while I fry off my catfish. But first, let me tell you a true story about the sponsor of this video, Verb. Last Saturday morning, I had zero motivation and all I wanted to do was just sit on the couch. But the weather was nice and I didn't wanna waste the day. So we got up, got going, I ate a Verb energy bar and by the time I got dressed and was out the door, I was ready to like rip a phone book in half. Lauren and I went and played pickleball. 
We went for like a three mile walk. We got a bunch of groceries and I had a great day. What I love about Verve bars is that they're low in sugar. They've got about 80 milligrams of caffeine from organic green tea. And that's the stuff that makes me feel more focused and energized without all that anxious jittery buzz that you get from caffeinated coffee. And right now for a limited time, you guys can try five of Verve's best-selling flavors and save 40% off of their new variety mega pack with my code Brian. My favorite flavors in the pack right now are cinnamon roll and s'mores, but honestly, all the flavors that I've tasted have been balanced and not overly sweet. I genuinely think these bars are a great product. I eat them often and I think you would like them too. Again, click the link in my description and use code Brian at checkout for 40% off your mega pack. Now let's check back on the catfish. The pieces that we salted 20 minutes ago are ready to bread. As you can see, that brief bit of time under the salt here has firmed up the flesh and made it a lot less mushy. Now to bread these things, I'll need to make some dry mix and a wet mix. So for that, I'll grab two medium bowls and into the first one, I'll combine 100 grams of all-purpose flour, 15 grams of salt, most of which got stuck in the glass thingy, get in there, then five grams of black pepper, 10 grams of garlic powder, 10 grams of onion powder, five grams of paprika, two grams of cayenne pepper, 100 grams of the same medium grind cornmeal that we used for the puppies, and then 100 grams of fine grind cornmeal. And don't worry, you don't have to buy two different cornmeals. To make the fine grind, I'll just throw 100 grams of the medium grind stuff into a blender and spin it for about one minute, or until it's ground down into a much finer texture that's kind of like AP flour. Let's call it corn flour. I use both grinds here because the coarser stuff gives me that crunchy, fun cornmeal texture that I love from fried catfish, and the finer stuff both sticks to the fish better and covers more of it, helping to seal the fish inside. And once everything's in the bowl, I'll just stir it to combine. There we go catfish breading. Next comes the wet, so into the other bowl I'll combine 500 grams of buttermilk and 30 grams of hot sauce. The buttermilk's going to bring some acidity and twang, but it's also going to help the breading stick to the fish. Now, to bread these fish, I'm going to grab one filet at a time with the fork and drop it into the hot sauce buttermilk mixture. From there, I'll give it a toss to get it evenly coated, and then I'll lift it out of the milk and let it drain off so I don't get too much wet stuff into my dry stuff. Unlike the process that I've shown you for fried chicken on this channel, I do not want any partial hydrated bits of flour in my dry. That's going to make the final breading way too heavy and heavy breading here will fall off of the fish. Once this fish is well dusted up with breader like this, I'll grab it with my hands and then toss it back and forth to get rid of anything excessive. From there, I'll move it over to a parchment lined sheet tray to hang out while I bread the rest of my fish. And once I've got all eight chunks of this catfish delicately covered in a thin veneer of cornmeal, it's time to fry. Back at the stove, my pot is back up to a sweltering 350 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's it's time to fry some catfish. Working two at a time, I'm going to carefully lower in my breaded fillets away from my body to avoid any splashing of hot oil on my precious Birkenstocked feet. Socks and stocks, baby. Halfway through, I'll come back and nudge these around a little bit to make sure they're not getting stuck to the bottom of the pot or each other, and then I'll give them another two minutes or so. And that's it. Fried catfish goes fast. There's really nothing to it. And after five minutes of fry time, I'll lift a piece out to assess the crispiness and it looks great. So I'll move it over to a wire rack or some paper towels to drain off and then I'll grab the rest. Check out the breading on this fish. It's thin, light, supremely crispy and those tiny little bits of cornmeal are gonna crack and pop in our mouth. Listen to the breading too. And the inside of the fish is flaky, tender and moist. But I do need to address a common issue with fried catfish or swai. If you have a product that is super soaked with phosphates or was treated poorly in the freezing stage, it's gonna leak out a lot of water as it rests and sog up the breading like this. Don't fret, the move here is to pop the fish back into the oil for 30 seconds. That's gonna sizzle off any of the resting juices and dry out the crust one more time and make it crispy. Listen to this crust. Now to plate this up, I'll drop some catfish onto a sheet tray, then a few hot hush puppies from the oven, and surprise, a last minute spicy mayo tartar sauce to dip it in. To make the sauce, I grabbed my food processor and combined 100 grams of mayo, 75 grams of ketchup, 30 grams of hot sauce, 20 grams of mustard, 25 grams of lemon juice, 15 grams of wurch, 25 grams of shallot or red onion, one garlic clove, three grams of paprika, three grams of black pepper, and then three grams of salt. I'll spin that up for 30 seconds or so to break down the onion and the garlic. And there we go, a spicy tart sauce with a little bit of country flair. Some people call it comeback sauce, I just call it spicy 
spicy tartar sauce. The brightness from the vinegary hot sauce and lemon juice are gonna pair perfectly with the sweetness from that fried corn fritter. And that's how you make a Southern Midwestern style fish fry, you guys. You've got crispy, golden, delicious catfish, crispy fried balls of corn fritter, and a spicy sauce to dip it in. What else could you want? Oh, and if you're worried that you won't like catfish, I would say don't be. It's not muddy tasting like a lot of people say it is. They're just being weenies about it. But if you really don't want catfish, I would say tilapia is a cheaper, more mild tasting option. That would be a good substitute. Anyways, I hope you guys give this recipe a try soon. It really is a blast to make for a crowd and everyone's gonna be stoked. Let's eat this thing.